Hello, Patchwork Husband here. Welcome to Studio 39 in Baldock. I am, as ever, in the classroom. For this month's video, we're looking at beautiful batiks. I have some arrayed across the desk in front of me. These are a blender-style batik. I love these things. This one in particular illustrates why they're so exciting. See the way it meanders through the colour palette as you uh, go down the fabric. These typically come from Indonesia, but most famously from Bali. They're hand dyed. They'll tell you that they do it using the wax resist method, but clearly they're made with witchcraft, pure and simple. I think they're fantastic. These are a sort of blender style I've got here. They also come in a more distinct pattern. So you might get something like this. Nice leafy pattern there. Got a flowery pattern here. But no two pieces of fabric are the same. They are absolutely marvellous. I have a project involving the use of batiks. I'll tell you exactly what the project is in more detail a little later, but in the meantime, I'm going to show you how I'm going to be making some patchwork blocks using these beautiful batiks. So I have to make some blocks. We're not absolutely sure what the finished size of the block should be. Somewhere between two and two and a half inches, we think probably works quite well with the design. So rather than trying to hurt my head by calculating back from the finished block size, I'm going to start with the size of fabric and that will, will tell me what the finished block size will be, if that makes any sense. So I've got my three strips. I'm doing this rail fence design, which involves sewing three strips together and then cutting them into the blocks. My strips are one and a quarter inches wide. So three of those would make three and three quarter inches. However, I've got quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch seam allowances. So six times a quarter inch is an inch and a half. If we take an inch and a half, of three and three quarters, we end up with two and a quarter. So my finished block size should be two and a quarter inches, which is somewhere between two and two and a half inches. So that's good. So I'm going to sew these together and then we'll start turning them into blocks. I've prepared the first two strips using fabric clips, my favorite. So now let's sew them together. I haven't mentioned this, but obviously I've got a quarter inch foot with a quarter inch dive on it. Make it easier for me to do my quarter inch seam. Okay. First one done. So now I can do the second seam. I've had to use pins this time because there's not enough throat in the fabric clips to grip it, so I have to use pins. I managed to do it without stabbing myself, so that's a result. I've learned a couple of things doing these. Um, I've done several now. The first one is that you have to concentrate when you're pinning it, or you either attach it to the wrong side of the fabric strip, or you put the seam on the wrong side. I've done both of those. The unpicker has been out. The other thing I've learned is, is that if you sew it in one direction, i.e. with the selvage at the bottom for the first seam and then spin it round and put the selvage through the machine first for the second seam, it seems to counteract the sort of bananaing effect. I don't know if that's a technical term, but it's quite descriptive. You can end up with a slightly curved strip if you put both seams through in the same direction. Don't ask me why. So let's have a go at this. Oh, and the other thing that helps is to press it flat with the iron before you attempt to do the second seam, and then the fabric isn't fighting you. I've got a few finished strips here. This is the beauty of batiks. No two are the same because, of course, they're hand dyed. This is particularly well illustrated by the centre strip. Very pinky there, but changing in colour as it goes across the bolt. 
we've cut these off a fat quarter so they're 22 inches long approximately you could cut them off the whole width of a bolt which would make them 44 inches long that would rather overtax my seam sewing ability i don't think i could sew it that long straight so i'm quite happy sticking with my 22 inches i thought it might be a good idea to run through the the terminology what these different elements are called before i start trying to assemble the blocks so we've got strips of fabric in this case three of them have been sewn together to form a stripped piece we're going to cut those up to make a square we're going to sew several squares together to make a block so we've got blocks squares stripped pieces and strips there I've learned something this rail fence pattern repeats every four squares so this is what I'm trying to make, which is actually eight squares or two blocks. I've got a completed block here, so I'm now going to make a fourth block and sew it to the already completed block of four squares. I've got to be careful that I get them round the right way or I'll mess the pattern up. We're going to end up with a sort of step effect, which I'll be able to show you when we've got more squares together but using this one as my template I can lay out the pieces ready to sew them together so the first thing I'm going to do is sew these two together so I will pin them and sew them so there's my square pinned pin pin let's give that a sew Sewn. so I'll give that a press and do the next one now I have to sew together my two squares of two to form my block of four this last seems a little bit more complicated because I need to get it centered up by which I mean we need to have nice straight lines in the middle there it would look awful if it didn't line up now I've been taught a way to make sure that this happens which is, I hope you can see this on the camera, but using this pin, I'm going through the thread line on the top piece and through the thread line on the bottom piece so that the two seams are exactly in line. I've then pinned the edges as well to, to, to get the whole thing firm. And in theory now, I'll have a perfectly lined up block when I sew it together. That's the theory. Should we see if it's true? This is a tremendous test of my accuracy. Will I be found wanting? out and see how I got on. Not bad. I'll give that a press. So now I've got my two blocks of four which I will sew together. Again I've used the pin through the seams method to make sure that the centers will line up. So let's sew this one quickly. seems it's just picked up there so I'm just going to lift the foot flatten it again put the foot down again okay pinned up 
pins out. Hmm. It's not too bad, is it? Now at this point, I'd like to show you what my project is. The item that I'm making a cover for, for that is my project, is rather heavy. So Mohammed must go to the mountain. Now my pH cam here is a marvellous thing, but it is a coal-fired, steam-driven Leviathan. And of course it's got a crew. We've got the camera key grip, the focus puller, the dolly grip. You're doing a great job, guys and gals. Oh, and of course, I mustn't forget, slumped in the corner doing his crossword, the best boy. What is a best boy? What do they do? Nobody knows. But anyway, I need to go into Patchwork Husband Culinary HQ to show you something. So I'll be using PH Cam Portable. The quality is not quite so good, but it'll only be for a moment. Come with me. So here I am in Culinary HQ with PH Cam Portable. I hope you can hear me all right. This arrived in the kitchen three or four months ago. It says it's a Kenwood Chef. I've no idea what it's for, but it looks very nice. It didn't come with a cover though. In these mean-minded, penny-pinching days, they can't even give you a cover. You can buy them on eBay, apparently. But when I'm perfectly capable of making one myself, that would be defeatist and lily-livered. So that is my project. Using beautiful batiks, I will be making a cover for this Kenwood Chef mixer. It should be fairly straightforward, except for this bit here. It's got this opening liddy bit, which sticks out quite a long way from the edge of the mixer. So I think we're going to end up with a, a dart in our cover there to accommodate that. But other than that, I think it should be a fairly straightforward shape to make the cover for. So back to the workroom. Now, it seems that I've actually started my block production before I've worked out how many I need. So this is when I'm going to have a, a rough attempt to see how many uh, blocks I need. I've made this maquette. It's a very exotic word, isn't it? It sounds like an exotic South American bird. This is created by pinning material over the mixer and then marking and cutting so that I've effectively made a template. With this, I can work out roughly how many blocks I need. So I've got this piece across the top, which is going to go up the front, across the top and down the back. And I think I'm going to need one, two, three, four blocks of eight for that. This is the back panel. And I think I'm going to need three. And it therefore follows that for the front panel, I also need three so that's three and three and four is ten blocks of eight squares so that's what i need so i better get on with it and make a few more i think this video is probably long enough now so we're going to call this the end of part one we've tested my attention span and i'm afraid we found it wanting in the next episode part two we'll be doing some interesting ing things we're going to be doing sashing, piping, quilting, and binding. So I hope you'll join me for that. In the meantime, as is traditional, I thought I'd give you some half-time match facts. So here we go. Fat quarters used. Three, one in each colourway. Unpicked and re-sewn stripped pieces. Three. It's amazing how many ways you can find to do it wrong. Unpicked and re-sewn blocks. Four. Again, amazing how many ways you can find to do it wrong. Sewing machine stitch length not reset after machine turned on. One. Apparently you have to reset the stitch length every time you turn on the sewing machine. Who knew? Well, everybody but me, apparently. Fingers stabbed with pin drawing blood. Two. I hope you found this interesting. See you next time. Patchwork Husband, over and out.